Welcome back to Building Integrity. I'm your host, Josh Porter, and today we're continuing our series on Champlain Towers South. Now, after our last video about shear walls, a lot of you guys I saw in the comments had a lot of questions. Um, we talked about, you know, we, we kept referring to the shear walls and talking about them in the last video, but I'm seeing questions pop up like, what is a shear wall, right? So what I thought I would do is before moving on with some of my other subject matter that I wanted to talk about, I figured we would stop make a video and answer some of these questions that I see popping up. And I'm sure there are a lot of you that are maybe just too sheepish to ask, ask the question. So you'll get an opportunity to learn these things as well. Okay, so digging into it, we are looking at the building and we're talking about shear walls and I will explain to you what that is. But in general, the purpose of a shear wall is to resist lateral motion in the building. So if you have wind pushing against the building this way, or you have wind pushing against the building this way, or the, any other direction really, these walls are supposed to resist that building from falling down. And this particular building, Champlain Tower South, had shear walls here at this location, and it also had shear wall at this location. Okay, so what is a shear wall? So in, what I've done is I've drawn just a very simple uh, drawing showing uh, columns, and either a slab or a beam, okay? And if you have a force pushing against your little building here that we've drawn, you're going to see that without any other structural uh, elements, this building is going to list over, okay? It's going to lean over. And the reason why is because you have the, the, the wind force, let's say here, the lateral force, but then at the bottom, the bottom of all of your columns are connected to the foundation or the next floor below. So these aren't gonna wanna move, so they're gonna provide a resistance in the opposite direction, which causes the whole thing to lean over like a house of cards. So in this example that we're gonna use here for this video, you can see that in the upright position, the, the, the angular dimension between this corner and that corner is approximately 22 and a half feet. But when it gets pushed over, in the second image down below, you can see that that distance grows. It's essentially like a diamond now, instead of a rectangle. And this dimension is now 25 feet instead of 22 and a half feet. So between location one and location two, you can tell that it's actually gotten further apart. And this is part of the, the listing action when a building leans over. So the purpose of a shear wall is to prevent this from happening, but there are actually three ways that we can prevent this from happening. I'm gonna teach you all of those real quick and then we'll get into shear walls specifically. The first way to deal with this is bracing. And so I'm sure you guys have seen this in maybe a metal warehouse building um, or something like that, or in wood construction, sometimes we see it, but you have these angular braces that are installed in both directions. Now in this case, with the wind coming from the left side of the image, you can actually see that each of these cables is resisting that elongation. Remember, it went from, from uh, 23 and a half feet to 25 feet. So it wants to get longer, but the steel cable wants to resist that and prevent it. So it has a force in the opposite direction uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from that stretching motion, if you will, which prevents the building from listing over uh, or leaning over and makes a for a stable structure so that's one way we deal with this is with bracing we don't typically use a lot of bracing in reinforced concrete construction the other way that we can deal with this is by really beefing up our connections okay and you don't actually have to have like a big column capital like i drew here but the idea is that you design the steel and you design the reinforcing to tie in together so that uh, it, it is a strong enough connection that it actually resists that, that overturning at each corner. So if you remember from the previous picture, this, this, this column would have normally leaned over and this sort of creates this rotational motion, if you will. We call this motion a moment. So this horizontal lateral load being put on the building from the left creates a moment force in the structure and if you can make each of the connections strong enough, they will actually resist that moment force. And we draw that with this little curved angle, uh, curved arrow that I've circled here. And we call this type of construction a moment frame. 
Okay, and then the third way that we deal with uh, preventing a building from listing or falling over is we deal we, we design shear walls. So in this case, you might just fill in all of the columns and slabs, or you might just integrate the wall with it completely. And so now when you have your lateral load coming from the left, the, the, the wall itself is sufficiently rigid, and we draw that by showing uh, four arrows all in opposing directions, which basically means that the wall itself is able to transfer through angular action, through shear action, the force from there and stabilize the whole structure. Another way you can think of it is the concrete itself, uh, pick any point along the foundation here, let's say, is going to be pushing back up. So it's handling you know, gravity load and it's handling the lateral load from the wind. So it's going to resist at every point down there and it uses the material of the concrete matrix itself to transfer those forces throughout the whole element and resist that lateral motion, that lateral force. So looking back at our building uh, for, for uh, Champlain's Tower South, um, we can see again, we have these shear walls here. And let's talk about this one. This, this shear wall here would have been primarily designed to resist motion then in this direction because we want to prevent the, the building from listing over or from wind force, lateral force in this direction. And uh, same thing with this smaller uh, uh, shear wall here as well. That is there to resist any sort of wind motion against the face of the building from either direction that it may occur. And what you'll find is that we don't have a lot of, um, uh, of shear wall resistance in this, this direction here. Okay, we have a little bit with this wall here and that wall there. And we have a little bit in what we call a weak moment frame. So if you go back and remember, I talked about the moment frames is just where you have a column and a beam or a slab and you just have a really good connection there. Well, we have a weak moment frame right here. All right, so that explains what shear walls are and where they're at in the building. Hopefully that helps you locate them. Um, again, they are, they are right here is where we're talking about and right here. All right, now, for the next question that I saw popping up a lot was, you know, why isn't there rebar sticking out of the shear wall? We talked in the last video about how when this building comes down, it was shearing across that face, which is breaking the plane of the concrete. And we talked about non-uniform distribution of shear and why it is actually pretty easy for this, bu bu this, this building to collapse in this progressive manner and rip across the face of the shear wall. But one of the questions I kept seeing pop up a lot was why isn't there any rebar? So I found some better photos um, uh, looking at this shear wall at a couple locations much closer and I thought we could look at them together. This is uh, one of the images. Um, let me go back. Yeah, okay. So this is one of the images here and uh, we can see that this is one of the lower floors. This slab right here is one of the lower floors. And we can see that there's actually quite a bit of rebar coming out of that slab. So this sort of it contradicts this idea that, well, why don't I see a lot of, or why didn't I see any steel coming out of the shear wall? There actually is some, some steel coming out of the shear wall. We can actually see a lot of conduit. Uh, this, this, these bigger uh, lines over here are, uh, appear to be, to me, to be conduit. And you can see that there is rebar behind that conduit. Okay, so this, this picture is really just here to kind of, um, to point out that there is some rebar sticking out of the shear wall uh, and it was zippered or ripped out of the concrete that collapsed. Okay, so here's a close up of some more conduit on that side uh, of, the, of the shear wall here. Here's our conduit. But now we're getting into an area where we do have uh, where we do have some rebar, which is down here at the bottom of the picture, okay, sticking out. But then we have areas where we don't have as as much rebar, or we don't have any rebar sticking out. So taking a closer picture at this area up here, this 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 upper area, you can see that we have the remnant locations of rebar here. Here, there's an upper and lower here, upper and lower here, upper, lower, upper here. So there's a bunch of, of these locations where this rebar is. Now it's too hard to tell from this photo, 
But the question is, is well, did the rebar shear itself and calculating the forces, you know, I kind of just did some quick calculations. That is a possibility that a lot of this rebar would have just sheared due to the weight of the falling material above it. Uh, the other question is, 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 or did the rebar just pull out? Well, in order to answer that question, I thought it'd be helpful to look at the construction drawing. Okay. And so here is that shear wall that we were mainly focusing on in the last video. Now in red is the shear wall with the two return shear walls attached to it. Uh, but if you look at the areas that I've shaded out in gray, these are what we call uh, chases or shafts. And what they are is they're essentially an area where there is no slab and it's a hole straight from the bottom to the top. So in the upper chase, this is for mechanical equipment, electrical and things like that to go from the top floor down to the bottom floor. Uh, same thing with the elevator shaft. This is a giant opening area here so that the elevators can obviously go up and down the building freely. And then of course you have the stairwell shaft and the stairs themselves are not typically considered a structural component of the building, but the shaft that they're in, the, the, the shear wall that's created around them is considered structural. So you have two shear walls on either side of this stairwell shaft, but essentially you have no concrete in any of these three areas, no slab concrete in any of these three areas that I have shaded gray. And so the way the engineer uh, designed this is in some areas, he has rebar continuing through the slab, through that shear wall and on. But in most of the other locations, there's either no rebar because it's, it's the outside face of the building over by the stairwell shaft, or he had this symbol for rebar, number four rebar at 10 inches on center, and he shows this little symbol here uh, at the end of it, which looks kind of like a candy cane, right? It's a, it's a hook symbol, but the idea is, well, you're supposed to hook this rebar. Well, the problem is, and, and hook means that you bend the rebar. You either bend it down or you bend it up. Well, the way that you would construct this building is you would pour a wall solid and you would have rebar sticking up to, to tie into the next wall, but then you would pour your slab on top of that. So these number fours would not have been placed until after the wall below was already in place. So the only way you could hook the rebar realistically is if the hooks were preset into the wall and already sticking out into the slab, which makes form work actually more challenging to do. Um, or the other thing that you could do is you could bend and hook the bars up into the next wall. Uh, I would guess, and, and also I, I would guess this because there is no details that I have found in the structural drawings that uh, that give a detail for how to hook this rebar into this shear wall. So my best guess is that they just simply loose laid the steel into the slab and just dead ended it inside the wall. And then that's why those dots that we saw in the previous photo is just simply areas where the rebar was only in the wall four to five inches and just simply pulled out because it wasn't in there enough. We call that under the uh, American Concrete Institute code, we call that uh, development length or it's embedment depth. And when you only have an embedment depth of three, four inches, that's really not enough to resist that pull out motion. Okay. So the third question I saw popping up a lot was, well, why did the east end, which we're talking about this, this portion of building over here, why did the east end hesitate before falling, okay? And that brings us over to the second shear wall in the building. Now, if you look at this still grab, the center of the building portion has already collapsed, it's missing, right? So the portion that you can see remaining is that east end portion that I'm talking about. And if you notice, the this area here is very straight, straight up and down. Okay, and we're missing a portion of the, the, the front end of this building. So if I were to draw this onto this plan to the left, the way it looks to me is that we are approx we approximately have this much building left standing in this in this still image. And we don't know how much is, is in the back, but this seems to be pretty close to what we're dealing with in this uh, still image. I'm trying to make it bold enough because there's no way for me to make my line thicker. And I know a lot of people have been complaining that they can't see the line work that I'm putting on here. So that seems to be pretty consistent with what I'm seeing over here in the steel, in, in this uh, still image. 
you know, it kind of comes around here and then it goes around the building and then around back and then back over to the shear wall. So I would argue that this straight line here is the shear wall, which provided some bracing, but you can, you can see from the previous slides and from looking at the drawings that this shear wall is significantly smaller and less robust than the shear wall on the west side of the building. But in nonetheless, I believe that this caused some hesitation and slowed down the collapse action for a while and before the building finally uh, collapsed. And the other thing I wanted to point out too is again, we talked before about the shear wall, but I had mentioned that there, that shear wall was braced by what's, what's considered a weak moment frame. Now it's weak because it's, it's, it's not designed to handle moments, but because it is a column, you have a column right here, and you have a beam right here, it's, it, and, then it's, and then of course that beam is poured into the wall, you're going to have some lateral strength in this direction, albeit not much, because again, the, this area wasn't really designed for uh, uh, lateral movement in that direction. All right, and so this sort of ties in to the next question uh, that I saw popping up a lot, which was why didn't the east shear wall keep uh, that end from collapsing? So the shear wall we just looked at, why did the building still collapse despite the fact that that shear wall caused it to hesitate and held it up for a little bit? Well, if you go back to that last image and I zoomed in on this shear wall a little bit, uh, if you look over on the far right, you can see that there's a red line and that there's an orange line. Now the red line is where the building was at the beginning of the video standing upright. The orange line shows where the building is in this still image. So in this still image, even though you can see what appears to be the straight edge, this leading edge right here of the shear wall, even though you can see that, the building is already listing over, which you can see this is this distance here. It's, it, the top of the building has already listed over from where it was to where it is now. This to me indicates that you've already got progressive failure, even though the whole thing hasn't collapsed, you've got progressive failure of internal components, columns and slabs in this area of the east wing, in this moment of the video, just before it actually collapses. And what gives out actually is not the shear wall itself, but the building actually, if you remember the video, it actually, from this point here, it doesn't keep listing over and fall over. It doesn't do that. It actually collapses straight down at this point. And so what happens is it collapses straight down and the shear wall is actually pretty strong, but once all of those floors are taken away from it, it can no longer stand up there. It's sort of teetering and it falls. And so to, to, to explain that and to show what I mean, you can see the photo of the aftermath here. And if you zoom in on the rubble pile, you can actually see that shear wall from the east section laying on top of the rubble. I highlighted it here in red, but you can actually see where those stair landings, stair stringer, stair landing, you can see that on every floor or every half floor really of the stairs on this shear wall. So that shear wall stood for a while while the building pancaked and collapsed next to it before eventually falling on top of the rubble pile itself. Well, that's everything I've got for you guys today for this video. Um, I've got several others planned to teach you some stuff and to look at things. We, I, I, I've told you before in the last videos that we were going to start looking at the construction drawings. Um, that ended up being a much more monumentous task than I thought it was going to be. So I'm still working on that and we're getting real close to recording that. But in any case, hopefully you guys learned something from this video and enjoyed it. Take care.